In this video, I'm going to prove that really cool, interesting Euler equation, which tells us that e to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i times sine x. Yeah, this is useful among uh, other things and understanding complex numbers through rotation and uh, and you know understanding the polar form of a complex number. Okay, uh, now. It's actually very straightforward how to prove this if you know Maclaurin series in Calc 2. Um, all we have to do first is get at the Maclaurin series for e to the x, which is this, and e to the x has one of the simpler Maclaurin series, right? Uh, this is the closed form, and if you use your understanding of sigma notation to interpret this closed form, then you can write uh, the infinite sum this way, term by term. Obviously, we can't write it all, so the dot, 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 showing that it goes on forever, right? So this polynomial that goes on forever actually equals e to the x, in case you're unfamiliar with a Maclaurin series. Now, in addition to e to the x, we also need the Maclaurin series for sine, which looks like this. It's a little bit more complicated than e to the x, but fairly easy to arrive at. Again, the closed form is here, and the term by term writing is here. Uh, of course, as you could imagine, we also need the Maclaurin series for cosine x, which is right here. Yeah? Cool. Now that we have all three of them, again, we're seeking to show that e to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i times sine x. So what we're going to do is modify the Maclaurin series for e to the x uh, and figure out what e to the i x is. And then, um, you know, show that it equals this right hand side by also modifying the Maclaurin series for sine and then adding i times sine x to cosine x. So you'll see uh, it's to come shortly. Now, first, let's get at e to the i x. Uh, notice that when we say e to the i x, we're not multiplying the Maclaurin series for e to the x by i. We're actually replacing all of the x's here by i x or with i x. So you can see that here. So instead of just multiplying e to the x by i, what we're doing is we're actually plugging in i x in place of x. When we do that, the closed form will have to change from this to this, right? And then the um, right hand side writing will look like this. Yeah? Each of the x's replaced with i x. Um, all right. Now, clearly we can simplify this right hand side and also, we're not going to be able to show all of the terms. So I think like the first five terms, which is what I have here, is sufficient for our proof. Now, um, ix here, there's nothing to do. But here, we have ix all squared. Using exponent rules, we know that that means i squared times x squared. And we also know that i squared is negative 1. So um, keeping that in mind, we can write this term, this third term, which says 1 half i x all squared, we can write it as negative one half times x squared. Again, knowing that i x all squared means i squared x squared, and then recognizing that i squared is negative one. And likewise, with this term, we can write it as uh, one sixth i cubed times x cubed, but we know that i cubed is negative i, so we can write this as negative a sixth i times x cubed. And here, it's uh, 1 over 24 times i to the 4th times x to the 4th, but i to the 4th is 1, so we can simply write 1 over 24 times x to the 4th. So here is everything I just said uh, in actual writing. So uh, here is a simplified version of e to the i x is what I'm saying. I've showed you, uh, for instance, here that the i squared has made this positive term uh, a negative, and um, that's because, again, i squared is negative 1, and you get it. You get it. Uh, and the rest of them follow just as I described when we're working over here. Yeah? Cool. Um, I think we're done with the e to the i x part. Now, we, what we have to do is show that it equals cosine x plus i times sine x. Well, with cosine x, we don't have to do anything. It's just cosine x right here, right? But um, the i times sine x will mean that we multiply... The, we multiply the Maclaurin series for sine with an i. And this time, multiplying doesn't mean that we replace all of these x's with an i x as we've 
done here. It just simply means that we multiply by i here and therefore multiply the sum in front by i, but we can bring in uh, multiplying by i in front of the sum. We can, we can bring it inside of the sum because i is a constant. And then um, each of these terms are going to be multiplied by an i, and that's all i times sine x will mean. And I show you that here. So um, you see I have cosine x, which is right here, and then I have plus, and notice that I still have a dot, dot, dot showing that the cosine x Maclaurin series is an infinite sum, but we can add infinitely many things, dot, 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 and then plus i times sine x, wherein we multiply each of these terms as I described by i, right? And now what we're going to do in simplifying this is rearrange these and write them as a polynomial should appear, which is with either increasing uh, exponents on x or decreasing exponents on x. Since Maclaurin series are conventionally written with increasing exponents on x, we're going to do that here. So in other words, we're going to add these two infinite sums um, and figure out how to rearrange the terms and write it as follows. When we do, unsurprisingly, it equals exactly what we found with e to the i x over here. Uh, let's do the first five terms. Let's compare. 1 is 1. i x here is i x there. Negative 1 half x squared is negative 1 half x squared. Do I need to say more? Okay, I think you can see. Um, obviously, there are more terms here um, that, that I've written that we haven't showed here, but if we wrote a few more terms of e to the i x, it's going to match. In fact, they're going to match ad infinitum. Yeah? Cool. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.